imagine that everything is changing and expanding, right? Um, but you're part of everything, so you wouldn't know because everything relative to everything else is always the same. This is, this is, this is why the constants are constant. Um, they vary though, um, and they probably fluctuate, you know, um, and, you know, we say we have a precise constant and it doesn't vary, but really, even on our best measurement, we have maybe 12 digit accuracy, like on the Reinberg constant, which my theory predicts correctly with the correct radius. Um, but um, but it, for the universe, 12 digit is just the beginning of the accuracy, right? Like, you know, um, it, you know, it could be fluctuating 30 digits down for the universe. That's not a problem. From our scale, it looks completely stable, right? It's like the rigidity of the vacuum. Um, the rigidity of the vacuum, uh, you know, is rigid for us, but for, um, for a larger scale, for a scale that would be very, very large, maybe for them it looks like a fluid because its relationship to the rest of what they're experiencing on much longer distance look much more curved, right? Than, than rigid, than straight, right? Because they're seeing it from a much larger, very, very large perspective. To us, it might look really rigid, because when we look at it, it's far from us, like from here to the universe. But but to a very, very large observation, that could be a very short distance, right? So it, it's a perspective thing. And, um, and so um, there's probably variability in the constants, um, but, and, and they may be small, um, and, um, and, and but, but again, if everything is moving relative to everything in the same, uh, you know, uh, relationship, then what we're describing is the physics of a relationship, which is really the only thing we can describe because the universe is most likely infinite in all direction. Um, our equation actually now has outputted a sub planckian unit uh, that makes up the Planck and the sub planckian unit that it outputs is remarkable. The sub planckian unit it outputs is exactly the distance between the sub Planck to the Planck, having the Planck being in the middle of the scale for our universe from the Planck to the universe. So it's a perfect octave, you know, relationship. Um, uh, so it's very, very interesting. Um, I, I mean, an exponent um, octave. And so um, um, it's very interesting. And um, it's, you know, uh, it, it um, really, really defines, um, like, and, and, and so we, we will be able to define as well universes that are bigger than our, like, and how many of ours there is in that bigger universe. And so like, for a very big universe, for instance, I'm trying to give you guys visuals, but for a very big, big universe, for instance, our universe might look like a fluid, meaning, you know, it, it, it might, just like water is a fluid you experience, you know it's made out of little rigid things we call atoms in there, right? You think of these things as rigid, um, you know, but, but it, like from the perspective of an atom, it wouldn't look like a fluid because it's from your perspective, looking at the water that looks like a fluid, right? So the scaling of all this is what makes it so that the physics we're writing is a physics of relationship. And since these relationships are fairly stable relative to each other, they might vary on a very small scale, 
but fairly stable relative to each other, then we know that we're nailing the physics of our universe.